And good morning, let's stand together and open in a morning prayer, shall we? And Father, here we are, and uh, this is Sunday, the Lord's Day. Thank you for each precious family out this morning, honored guests and visitors, those listening in over the airways. And Lord, we do pray that we will allow you to work upon our hearts. Pray for those who are away from us traveling. Pray for journey mercies for them. Pray for those this week that will be having surgery. We pray for Edith. Pray for these results and the outcome and the recovery. Pray that she'll have some good nurses and a mindful doctor. Pray for others, Lord, going through physicality, um, Issues We all have them from the youngest to the eldest. Pray for the junior church. Pray for the children there and the teaching of your word. Pray for the nursery and the babies and the young ones there. Your watch care over them. Pray, Lord, that your word would go forth with power this morning around the world. Pray for our missionaries. Pray, Lord, for those who are home unable to be here because of illness, those who are working. Pray for them. Brignos as they fly back from Europe. Pray for um, Amelia as she flies out. Pray for Gemma and her family as they fly out. And uh, Lord Pedro and Levy still away from us. Those waiting on thee for babies. We think of uh, Marika and uh, Lord this little baby that's developing in her. And uh, Lord again, give us a good hearing from your word. Save the soul that's near us, hell. Reclaim the backslider. Strengthen thy saints. Pray for the music this morning, the memory verse and everything that's said and done. We pray and give you the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. While you're standing, number 159. 159. Consoler, the mighty Prince of Peace. 
of earth's kingdom conqueror, who rain shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. 183. Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you? Do you? Do we love him like we ought to love him? Oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. 183 on the second. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of this precious blood, the sinner's perfectly. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my Father has in store for every day. And though I tread on darksome path, lead sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. And good singing. Now, how about some good reading? John chapter 16, our memory verse. You get to say it out loud. You get to hear your voice. John chapter 16, and for you Bible college students, that's in the New Testament. John chapter 16, verse 33, our memory verse. How many of you this morning are overcomers? How many? Are you an overcomer? I trust that you are. John 16, 33, what a verse. What a verse. So as always, we name the street, which is John, Gospel of John, the street address, address, chapter 16, verse 33. Ready? Let's begin. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I hope you'll hide that in your heart. You may be seated. 185, my Savior's love, 185. By the way, if you don't have a Bible, there's one in the front seat in front of you. 
And if you don't have a songbook, there should be one there also <coughs> where you can share with your neighbor, 185. <coughs> Take your Bible once again, find the Gospel of John, chapter 16. <clears throat> we have been going through the private time of our Lord alone with His own. Chapter 16, He washed their feet, even the feet of Judas, who would betray Him, slander Him and give him up. He watched the feet of Peter, who would deny him, cut off a man's ear, fall asleep while Jesus was praying in the garden. Chapter 15, he talked about abiding in him. By the way, chapter 14 ends with the introduction of the comforter. Jesus said, I'm going away. They were grieved, they were upset. In chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, and I've told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Then chapter 15, he talked about abiding in him. My words abide in you, and you abide in me. My words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So then in chapter 16, uh, chapter 15, 16, now they've left the upper room. They're on their way to the garden. Jesus has been talking to them about his crucifixion. He's been telling them he's going to go away and going to leave them. And they were sorrowful, heartbroken, confused, full of doubt. And so he's trying now to encourage them along the way. As we read chapter 16, I'd like to point out some words for you to look for and to find. Uh, one of those words is the word things, things. Look at how many times we find the phrase these things. And then a small little word, joy, J-O-Y. Another small word, ask. And then 
Finally, we will see in this 16th chapter the words, a little while, a little while. We'll also see in chapter 16 why the Holy Spirit came and what his job is to mankind and for the twice born child of God. So I hope that you look carefully on your Bible. If you don't have one, there's one in front of the seat. I have nothing for you. The Lord has for you what he'd like to give you this morning. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I pray that you'll look carefully on the word of God. And as uh, we conclude then uh, this 16th chapter, uh, we're not concluded, but we'll finish reading it. Let's go into chapter 15, realizing that there's no chapter breaks. The only book of the Bible that has chapters is the book of Psalms. Other books of the Bible had chapters put in them in the 16th century. And sometimes the chapter breaks right as the sentence is continuing. Verse 26 in chapter 15. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness. Now watch that. Ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken unto you. So I'll give you the first one. That's the first, these things. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. The coming of the Holy Spirit, the hatred of the world towards mankind, and the fact that they would be witnesses. They should put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And that, of course, we refer to the Apostle Paul, wouldn't it? And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning. Why? Because I was with you. You don't, you don't like my voice, or what is it? He doesn't like my voice. <laughs> but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, whither goeth thou? But because I have said these things unto you, see it? Sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, now watch this. Here is the purpose of the Holy Spirit coming to mankind. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now watch the work of the Holy Spirit. And when he has come, he will reprove the world, that's mankind, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because you believe not in me. What is the daddy of all sins? What is the sin that will put you in hell? Unbelief. Unbelief is the unpardonable sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So if you don't believe in Jesus, there's no heaven for you. So he's come then to reprove the world of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness, remember Jesus came so that you and I could be righteous, so that you and I could be just, so that you and I could be holy and walk with God and be a witness in a dark and a wicked world. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, now there's a judgment day coming, beloved. John chapter 5 says the judgment of the just and on the unjust. If you allow your children to just live their lives the way they want to live it, and you never show them the fact of a judgment day, uh, they will live a life of lawlessness. They will live a life of anarchy. They will live a life of never looking to leadership or obeying the laws of the land because there's no punishment. 
So there's judgment. Judgment is important. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. I have many things to say unto you, verse 12, but you cannot bear them now. They cannot bear them now. We'll see why they could not bear them now. There's a reason for that. And that reason is because they don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. And unless you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, unless you're born again, the Bible is a closed book to you. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, see it, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. That begins with the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Goes into the epistles and ends with the book of the Revelation and that one verse. So you have the gospel, the epistles about the church, and then revelation about the coming of the Lord and the coming of the Antichrist and the binding of Satan and hell for all eternity. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. How will he do that? By the word of God. Now here we have the little phrase over and over. A little while, and ye shall not see me. Again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said to them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while? Ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily. Remember, verily, verily in John's gospel is pay attention now, wake up, and listen to what I have to say. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament. And of course, he's talking here about the crucifixion. He would go to the cross, and that's why we have Sunday church. 52 times in a year, we commemorate the crucifixion, the shed blood of Christ on the cross in payment for our sins, his death, burial, and resurrection. So every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And then he ascended back to the Father. So we thank the Lord and we praise the Lord for precious salvation. And that salvation comes through the Lord Jesus alone. So you're going to be sorrowful. You're going to be sad. Uh, you're all going to leave me. We'll see that in verse number 32. You're all going to leave me. You're all going to run. You're all going to hide. Uh, you're going to see me arrested you're going to fall asleep before I'm arrested. Even Peter, James, and John, the three closest to me, will fall asleep at the most difficult time in my life, and rather than pray, will fall asleep. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And by the way, tomorrow, by tomorrow, he's going to be crucified. Verse 20, I'll read again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but see how wicked the world is? But the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow, sorrow shall be turned into joy. Now he gives the illustration here of a woman having a baby. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembered no more, get this thing out of me! I've never had a baby, but it must be excruciating. And so there's a time of sorrow. And then when the baby comes out, praise the Lord, it's a time of joy. Notice now, she remembereth no more the anguish. That's important now, because that word anguish there is the same word in verse 33, tribulation. For joy, now there's one of the key words, joy. 
that your joy and your joy, no man taketh from you. And verse 23. And at that day, you shall ask me nothing. Here it is again. Verily, verily, I say unto you. What a verse. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. I want a pink Cadillac. I don't want a pink Cadillac. I want a this. I want that. That's not just a catch-all verse that you can just say, God, I want this, I want that. We pray according to God's will. We pray according to God's will found in God's word. And that's how we pray, expecting the Lord to meet our needs. Verse 23 again. And at that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. Don't ever take Jesus' name lightly. Don't take his name lightly. Not just carte blanche and take the name of Jesus, because unfortunately, his name is taken in vain every day in the world. He will give it you. Here's a great verse. Hitherto or before, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, there's another little word, ask, A-S-K, ask, A-S-K, ask, seek, knock. So we're asking. That's what prayer is all about. Talking to the Father. Have you talked to him this morning? Did you spend time this morning talking to him? Did you spend any time at all this week talking with him? Ask, seek, and knock. How do we find the will of God? We find it in the word of God. And once we find the will of God and the word of God, we can trust the Lord to say, <coughs> Lord, it's me again. Lord, I really want to see this happen in my life. I really want to see my husband saved, my wife saved, my children saved. I really want to see my daughter come back to the Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Would you save my husband? Save my wife? Are we willing to pray like that? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know when we pray? We pray at moments of crisis in our lives. Then we pray. And then we promise God the moon. God, if you just get me out of this hospital bed, oh God, if you would just do this for me, I promise I will do this and, and I will surrender the mission field and, and I'll give up my kids and I'll, I'll, we promise all kind of things. He didn't want to hear that. And that's not the kind of prayer that God will answer. Verse 25, here it is again. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs about the mom and the baby. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I said, say unto you, I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself, see this, loveth you, because you have loved me, and that believe that I have came, that I came from, out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come unto the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Again, he's talking about his crucifixion. He's also talking about his ascension, going back to heaven. His disciples said to him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly, and speaketh no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needeth not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Here it is. Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come that ye should be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Think about that. Think about that. If they forsook your Savior, they'll forsake you. If they deny the Lord, they'll deny you. I mean, who are your friends? Do you have any friends? How many friends do you really have? You have acquaintances but, and associates, but how many friends do you really have? How many friends are there when you're really in trouble? I mean, when you have fallen, are there friends there to pick you up? Are there friends to help you? 
Do we serve Jesus only when we're healthy? Do we serve Jesus only when we're successful? Do we serve Jesus when everything is going fine in our home or in the church house? Is that the only time we serve Jesus? Let's read on. Every man to his own and shall leave me alone. Now here's a good thought for you to know. Look at your hand. Look at your hand. Do you have a hand? Anybody here have a hand? Jesus said, I will never leave thee. Going to go to surgery this week? Look at your hand. Having some trouble? Look at your hand. Feeling forlorn? Look at your hand. Feel like you can't do anything? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That doesn't mean you can jump off buildings and you can not play in the traffic. But what God expects, what God asks of me, God will do it. Notice. And yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And the Father is with you if you're saved. If you're saved, God is with you. God in heaven on the throne. Jesus on his right hand and is sitting for us, interceding for us, praying for us on our behalf. And the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And you can't beat that. Can you beat that? The Godhead is for us. Now, our text, and coincidentally, our memory verse. These things I have spoken unto you, all this stuff. A little while I'm going to be gone. You're going to be sorrowful. You're going to be sad. A little weeping. A little waiting. A little word. A little worrying. These things I have spoken unto you. Now watch the two little words, I am. In me, you might have peace. What word did I leave out? That, in me, ye might have peace. Next word, in the world, here's the promise. Ye shall have anguish. Verse 21. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. That's not the tribulation. The tribulation is when Christians are gone. The tribulation can't take place until every child of God is gone. And then down here, the Antichrist will show up. And the world, you think the world is bad now? <laughs> this is only previews of coming attractions. Now, I'm not a fatalist, I'm a realist, I'm a biblicist, but it can get a lot worse. And good news, is we are supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. Now, if you're an ambassador for Canada, incidentally, and you're stationed in some foreign country, and war is coming to that foreign country, they get you out. So when all destruction begins to come to this world through the Antichrist, that is a man full of the devil, and God's people are gone, then down here, all hell is going to break loose. And for seven years, two-thirds, somebody said, well, the first three and a half years of the tribulation, that's, uh, that's peace. No, no. Two billion, get the number, two billion people will die the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Billions, not millions, billions will die. Talk about the carnage. Talk about the destruction. It's coming, beloved. Why? Jesus said it's coming. But how about my life as a Christian? Ye shall have tribulation. But now notice the joy. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now find 1 John, end of your Bible. 1 John chapter 5. So my title is simply this. Overcomers. Overcomers. Have you ever overcome the weakness in your life? Have you ever overcome maybe a math problem? A physical problem you've gone through to overcome? First John chapter 5, by the way, written by the same apostle, young teenager John who lived to be the oldest apostle. 
died at about 100. 1 John 5 and verse 4. Well, let's take it up in verse 1. Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. What's the key word there? Believe it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. Think about that. Condemned already. What do I have to do to go to hell? Already there. You're already on your way there. We're all born sinners because of Adam and Eve. Wherefore is by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passes upon all men. He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth not, condemned already. Why? Because not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ. What's the Christ? The anointed one. The Messiah. The precious, virgin-born Son of God, sent from heaven to die on an old rugged cross. And everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him that is begotten of him. Did you see that? Everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him that is begotten of him. I'm begotten of the Father. I belong to the Lord. If you're saved, you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You're a child of the king if you're saved. Isn't that pretty good? No hell for you. Heaven for you. Angels watch over you. God has a plan for your life if you allow him to. By this we know that we love the children of God. And I don't love him. He's a thorn in my flesh. I don't love her. Well, we can love by the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can help us to love one another. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. Uh-oh. His commandments. His commandments are to help us, not to hurt us. Again, children need to know right from wrong. You and I need to know right from wrong. Him that knoweth to do good and doeth not at sin. So God's commandments are to show us. Now here it is. Here's how you deal with me. Here's how you deal with your neighbor. Here's how you deal with your family. And this will give you some parameters to help you to know how you get by. We have a book, amen? 66 books in one book. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And we have God's word that we can know the will of God. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Don't do that, Sonny. Don't play with that electric. Don't put that fork in that electric. Probably you're going to blow yourself up. Uh, don't put your hand in that oven. It's hot. So commands and instructions are to help us. Now here it is. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. See, our biggest adversary is the world, the flesh and the devil. And you know that. You deal with that every day of your life. That's basic Christianity. Before you were saved, you served the devil and you served him well. But now when you get saved, you have a new family, a new father. Uh, you have a new life. You have a new book. You have new songs. You have new walk. You have new talk. And your friends say, what in the world happened to her? You got religion? No, I got Jesus. There's a difference between religion and Jesus. Religion is man's doing. Salvation is God's done. So there's a difference. And suddenly you're walking a different walk. You're talking a different talk. And by the way, you, can, you, know, you know when you get around people and they use euphemisms or they, or they cuss or they just do not use words that are conducive to being around a godly person, that grieves the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And he lives in you so that you can be more Christ-like. And every day in the world when you submit to the word of God, how do I find the will of God? By the word of God. And God's will for your life and my life as Christians, John 13, 14, 15, 16, the Holy Spirit is introduced to us. So the Holy Spirit is holy. And when we get around ungodly people, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And there's an uncomfortable feeling. If you can fellowship with the world, beloved, I wonder if you're really saved. If you act like a pig, then you're not a sheep. If you act like a dog, then you're not a sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life. They should never perish. There's, they should never pluck them out of my hand. My sheep. They're my sheep. 
We belong to Him. So there's a new walk in our life. And we can overcome addictions. Here's a better word for addictions. It's a shorter word. S-I-N. It's sin. To the drunk, it's alcoholism. Uh, to the different lifestyles, they put all kind of names on them. No, it's sin. Him that knoweth the do not and do him that knoweth the good, do good and do not to him it's sin. So, beloved, when you live in sin, you break the fellowship with the Father. When a child of God gets away from the church of God and the people of God, I'm talking about real Christians, not just churchanity. I mean, there's over 30 churches in town. Which one is right? None of them's right. This church can't get you to heaven. Only Jesus can get you to heaven. But we have a fellowship. We get together. How are you? Uh, you sit in my seat? Oh. That's my park. Did you park in? Uh, what are you doing? We used to have a fellow. I loved him. Lived over here. They worked, lived, worked over here. Sat over here. Lived in town. They're now gone to another country. Wonderful family. I love them. Him and his wife. They're precious to me. But if you sat in his seat, he'd go home. <laughs> if he walked in and you were in his seat, he'd turn around and go home. And don't you dare park in his spot. And you have spots. So those are little simple things, but they get in our flesh. So the real child of God is dead to those things. Dead to those things. Well, that person, they just they affect me. Don't get dead to them. Pray for them. Love them. And then when you see them, you won't have to duck and hide. Isn't that right? Some people, you don't want to fellowship. But by the way, the Bible says, as much as lieth in you, live peace with all men. Some folks you can't fellowship with. They just rub you the wrong way. They like to get in your face. They like to put you down and criticize you. And uh, so you can love them, but you can't, don't have to fellowship with them. So when we think about real Christianity, we overcome this world because Jesus overcame it. If they love Jesus, they'll love you. They did not love Jesus. We saw that in John 15. If the world hate me, they're going to hate you. So if you're wrapped up with the world, if your best friends are worldly, you have no joy in your soul. Because they don't comfort you. They don't help you. They don't encourage you. They're going to bring you down. But whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, what? Our faith. As Christians, we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. But the world walks by, by faith or by sight. They want to see it. See it, touch it, believe it, smell it, taste it. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Now let's pray and go back to John 16. Father, this is really elementary. Not deep preaching or teaching, just elementary. And yet, Lord, when we forget the simple ABCs, when we forget the simple AB, no ABCs, we can't form words. No words, we can't form sentences. And the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And I pray in these next few moments, dear Holy Spirit, that you illuminate the Bible to us, open it up to us, help us to see the truth that you have for us this morning. One simple, profound verse. Bring out the truth to us. Help us to see these truths. In Jesus' name, amen. Back to verse 33. <coughs> these things he's talking about, I'm going to leave you in a little while. I'm going to go in a little while. You're going to leave me, but I'm not alone. Problems are coming your way. Look at chapter 14. Chapter 14. Verse 27. So, if you're an overcomer this morning, you have a five-letter word that comes into your life. Can you spell it with me? P-E-A-C-E. -E. Do you have peace? Do you have peace? The only way that you can have peace is you have to have the Lord. Romans 5.1 says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Think of it. Think of it. When Adam lost in the garden, when Adam sinned, you sinned. Those little babies back there, 
precious darlings, and they are, and they all are. But they're little sinners. <gasps> oh, what does she just call my little darling? We're born into sin. When those children get older, up until the time about 35, they're little rebels. About 35, you make up your mind, oh. But up until that time, they're little rebels. And uh, we have an Adamic nature. You have to teach children to do right. Is that right? Well, preaching is to encourage you to do right and to live right. Now, preacher, do you do, do you do right all the time? I sure don't. I want to. And I have a choice that I can, but I have the world and the flesh and the devil. By the way, that red Lincoln out there is not mine. <laughs> it's a loner. My car died. Our car died this week, so that's a loner. And by the way, it's an ugly car anyway. So don't get to thinking, that guy's got too much money. <laughs> We're paying him far too much money. <laughs> so peace, do you have it? These things I've spoken to you that you might have my peace. You're going to get upset, frustrated, full of anxiety. You're going to be fearful, you're going to be depressed, you're going to be downhearted. You're going to be cast down. You're going to want to hide yourself. You're going to want to go sleep all day, hide yourself. Because the world has overcome you. Because the devil has overcome you. Because your flesh has overcome you. But if you'll be in Jesus, remember John 15, you abide in me and I in you. Without me, you can do nothing. It's simple, abiding. You're, you're, I am the vine, you're the branches, just abiding in him and abiding in his peace. His peace comes through the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace. First is love, then joy, then peace. Peace I leave with you. Look at John 14, 27. Peace I leave it with you. My peace I give unto you. Isaiah chapter 9, don't turn there. And his name should become called Wonderful, Concert, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. His name should be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 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 It's like that little girl back there that's sleeping. Fatima's little girl, she's sleeping. She's sleeping. Sarah, is yours here? She's sleeping? She's in the nursery killing somebody. <laughs> Probably beating up on uh, Miriam's little boy, Melchizedek. Peace. Something about that. That little baby starts fussing. They don't know what to say. They're just, they're looking for your eyes. By the way, your eyes is your love tank to a baby. They're always looking for your eyes. And then once they catch your eyes and you're soothing them, they do what? They coo, coo. Not like a cat that purrs, but they're cooing. I'm in my mama's arms. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be in your father's arms? To know that he loves you with an everlasting love, an unconditional love, and he loves you. And he proved how much he loves you when he died on the cross. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what's right, I command you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give with you. Not as the world gives. There's no peace in the world. You can take all the drugs you want. You can take all the alcohol you want. You can get full of pornography. You can get, you can get lucky at the casino, so-called. They call it luck. Uh, you can win the lottery. You can have millions and millions. Of, there's no peace. No peace, saith my God to the wicked, Isaiah says. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now let's notice. Back to chapter 16. Overcomers. Are you an overcomer? Have you overcome the world? How do you overcome the world? You have to be dead. Dead to self. Yeah, but I want to. No, you have to be dead to self. You have to say, Lord, what do you want to? 
I don't think that's good English, but Lord, what do you want to? What would you like to do in my life? That's a hard thing to do. Teenagers. Well, when I get to be old, maybe I'll serve the Lord. You may not get old. Be a Daniel. Our teen activities, twice a month, teen activities. We're bringing out Bible characters. Mishael, Azariah, Ananias, and Daniel, who went in another country, were kidnapped from another country during war. They were, they were taken, and they could have been like the world. But Daniel purposed in his heart to say, I'm going to be for God. I'm going to be for God. Wouldn't it be great if all of our teenagers and adults and all of us were for God? Wouldn't it be great if we we're all on the same page and we had God's peace in our lives? These things, you're going to be worried. You're going to cry. You're going to weep. You're going to be sorrowful. That, that's life. You can't change life. Well, you don't. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Yeah. Yeah, God knows. Looking at a 17-year-old girl the other day, crippled for four years of her life, spasms, four years trying to get up and stand, reaching for a, an item on, an, on a higher counter, was a victory in her life. And yet every day in her life, she is miserable. We have a song in our, in our songbook, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Elizabeth spent 25 years as an invalid in the bed, looking out a window. And she said, God, what can I do for you? Could you say that to God? Here I am, a crippled. I can't get up. I can't walk. People take care of me. I have these bed sores. I'm miserable. God, can I do something for you? How about you write the words of this song? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, O Lamb of God, I come. And that 17-year-old girl, I think of a teenager, missing her life, a cripple. But she tries. She gets up. She falls. She gets back up. I pray for her, I don't know who she is, but I pray she'll come to know the Lord. Now, if this girl is not a Christian, think about her tenacity, her determination, I'm going to walk. And you and I have the Holy Spirit to help us to walk for the Lord every day in our life, to walk with the Lord. He will help you. You say, I can't do it. Of course you can't do it, but he will help you. Sunday school teacher, how would you like to be a Sunday school teacher? How about a preacher? Well, you have the gift of gab. That doesn't work. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. How's your marriage? How's your life? How's your family? How's your walk? God says, look to me. Come to me. In me, you have peace. In the world, tribulation. So you have a choice. Hang around the world. Live for the world. Live for your flesh. Live for entertainment. How far does that go? <laughs> Here's our whole life, right here. I, I can't do thumbs, I gotta do my finger, but here we go. That's our whole life. Not that, it's a bigger screen. We're wrapped up with that stuff. Get all that information. How about a book? How about a book? How about a precious book that says to you, come and let me hug you a bit. Come and let me love you a bit. Come and let me care for you a bit. Come and let me show you how much I love you. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. That's a promise. S-H-A-L-L, -L, have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Hey, you know, God engineers storms in your life. How many of you know that? Matthew 14, Jesus just fed the thousands, fed the thousands, fed them, cared for them. Then he said to the disciples, now get in the boat, just a simple command, get in the boat, go across the sea. Just get in the boat, go across the sea. I'll, I'll let everybody go. I'll let them go. 
And then Jesus, the Bible says, went into a mountain. And then he oversaw the apostles. And some of them were fishermen. And they were rowing and rowing and rowing and rowing and getting nowhere. They were in a storm. And if you've come to this church long enough, you've heard this illustration, Jesus will bring storms in your life to make you stronger. Uh, little babies have to stand before they can walk. And they get some bruises and some bumps along the way. And we get bruises and bumps along the way. And God brings storms in our lives. My car didn't start. I mean, it just was dead as could be. Couldn't, couldn't get a jump, couldn't do anything. Had to wait for a tow truck. Then the tow truck took the car to the dealership, and then the tow guy there left the hook on it. Then they couldn't get the hook off it. So I could have been very upset. The car won't run. I spilled my coffee. I'm going to have a bad day. Little things. Little things. Yeah, I didn't get that deal. I wanted that deal. I didn't get that deal. Stink. Yeah, I wanted that house. I didn't get that house. Somebody else got it. Yeah, I wanted to marry her. <laughs> Somebody else got her. And years down the road, you say, praise the Lord. <laughs> well, isn't he, isn't he adorable? Huh? You went to school with him. Isn't he adorable? And then down the year road, you see him, and he's just like, oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so God brings storms in our lives. But he said to those disciples as they were rowing and rowing and getting nowhere, he was watching them. The Bible says he was up there praying for them. And God is praying for you. And God is saying, oh, that I could get a hold of her life. Oh, that I could get a hold of his life. Oh, that he would simply look to me, rely on me, and trust me. Oh, peace like a river would come into his soul if he would just look to me. Be of good cheer, fellas. It's I. I have overcome the world. How did he do it? Galatians 2, and I'm done. Galatians chapter 2. By the way, we'll be in Galatians 2 tonight, Lord willing. So how can you overcome the world? I alluded to it, but now let's just develop it for a couple moments. Can you smell that? Hot dogs. We're going to have hot dogs. Hot dogs. I think we have about 6,000 hot dogs. Now, some people didn't get the memo because a precious lady, I don't want to embarrass her, but Allison said, I'll take care of it. Woo. I'll take care of it. So a truck pulled up this morning, a bunch of hot dogs, and buns, and beans, and yes, Dan, there's onions for Dan. The little things. So I better shorten my message, or the dogs may get really fat dogs, but I don't think so. So if you get this, we can go home or eat dogs. I hope you stay for the dogs. Now here's the whole deal. You've got to die. In order to live, you've got to die. If you're a Christian. Now if you're not a Christian, you're already dead. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, and you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses. If you're not a Christian this morning, you're dead to the things of God. And what I'm talking about is going right over your head. But thank God the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart this morning if you allow him to. And say, that's for you, buddy. That's for you, young lady. That's for you, young man. That's what he does. Verse 19, Galatians 2. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I may live in the God. I am crucified with Christ. Now, you cannot crucify yourself. It takes two hands. You can't do it. I am crucified with Christ. So where do you get saved? At Calvary. When Jesus died, you died with him, if you're saved. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lived. I don't want that. 
I don't want Christ living in my life, period. I want to enjoy myself. I want to enjoy the fruits of my labor. I want to show up from time to time at the church, just show up, come by, drop in. But I don't, I don't want to get in. I mean, I don't want to get in, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't want to get like that guy. I don't want to get sold out. I mean, I just want a little bit. <laughs> I want to be saved just a little bit. <laughs> okay, you propose to your pers pr prospective spouse. Um, I love you a little bit. <laughs> Would you marry me? No, get lost. <laughs> no, I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind. I love you, I love you, I love you. Hmm. I'll think about that. That's a good proposal, I th I'll think about it. You wanna pursue me? You love me? He loves you. He gave his life for you. Amen. He shed his blood for you. He went to the cross for you. If you can think about a naked man on the cross, naked, robed in blood, crowned in thorns, two thieves on either side of him, there justly, and here the innocent, precious Son of God on that middle cross. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the what? The faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Shall we stand together? Overcomers. Are you an overcomer? You can overcome whatever has overcome you. There's something that has gripped you, has you, whatever it might be, and you're controlled by that thing. Depression, doubt, despair, discouragement, whatever it might be. You're controlled by that. That video game, that pornography, that drug, that alcohol, that entertainment that runs your life, trying to get another high, you can overcome all that. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and trust him alone. And say to him, I can't do it. And of course you cannot do it. But he will help you to do it. Father, we pray now that you bless this invitation. Oh God. Those listening over the internet who turned in this morning, this 98th day of 24, better known as April the 7th, could be a changing day in their lives and in someone in this auditorium not saved. In our heart, our heart of hearts, not the thing that pumps the blood, but our soul and spirit. Without you, we're dead in trespasses and sins. But if we'll relinquish our control of our lives, and give it over to you and ask you to be our Savior. Come into our heart, trusting your shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection. Realizing that we're sinners lost and on our way to hell. And turn from our religion, our self-righteousness, and open the door of our hearts. You said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Save that soul that's near as hell. Reclaim that backslider. Strengthen thy saints. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody leaving now, unless it's an emergency, please. Preacher, if I died this 98th day that you say, 98th day of 24, I'm going to heaven. A little girl told me this morning that she got saved last week, a little girl. I said, when you die now, where are you going? She said, I'm going to heaven, a little girl. Jesus said, except you become as little children. What does that mean? Faith. Children have faith. But we as adults, we mess it up with our lives, with our testimony or lack thereof. So preacher, I'm saved and heaven's my home. Terry, can you go in that and see what's going on in the nursery there, please? I think somebody's stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, 
Heaven's my home, I know that for sure. Would you just raise your hand as a testimony for the Lord? Never be ashamed of the Lord. I'm saved, heaven's my home, I know that. Here's my hand, here's my hand. God bless you, you may take it down. Thank you, thank you for that. Don't do it because your neighbor did it or your husband or wife did it. Do it because you're sincere. No, I'm not saved. I know it, God knows it. I'm not a Christian. That is, I don't have Jesus living in my life. And this morning, I'd like to change that. There's no peace whatsoever in my life. No peace in my life. There's no peace in my life at all. Preacher, would you pray for me this morning? I need to be saved. I need somebody to take a Bible and show me from the Bible how I can be sure about going to heaven when I die. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand. Someone like that. Someone like that. Pray for me. I'm not sure. I need to be sure. I'm a Christian. I'm saved. But I've never followed the Lord and believed his baptism. <coughs> baptism saved me? No. No, baptism is an act of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When a Christian gets baptized, you're identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection in deep water. Go under the water, come up out of the water. I need to be baptized. I'm saved, but I've never been baptized. Would you pray for me? Is there someone like that? Remember me and remember me this morning. And preacher... And this is last. I want to be an overcomer. I want to have that victory that Jesus talked about. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I want that peace that Jesus talked about in my life as a Christian. Struggling. You struggle till you get to heaven, beloved. This body will never get totally and completely eradicated from sin because it's a sinful body. But your soul and spirit can be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Preacher, pray for me that I'll walk with the Lord and be faithful. Pray for me that I'll serve the Lord faithfully. Pray for me. That's my desire this morning. Pray for me. That's my desire. Pray for me. Amen. God bless you. And Father, you've seen it in our hearts. I pray now that you bless this invitation. I pray that you have your way in our lives this morning. I pray, oh God, once again for that lost person not saved. Not sure they died today to go to heaven. Oh God, may this be their day of salvation. I pray for that Christian that's struggling with the world, the flesh and the devil. We all struggle. Those three enemies, the world we live in, the flesh we live in, and the devil that's after us. Oh God, help us to be for Jesus. Help us to be faithful in serving him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take your Bible, please, and find the book of Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. We're going to sing it. And if you need to come this morning for prayer, would you come on the first stanza? We're going to sing this together now, a cappella. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Singing on the first stanza, coming. If you need to come for prayer, would you come now? Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power. For thou hast created as all things created, thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created. Thou art worthy, O Lord, singing, coming, and praying. Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory. all things created thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are created thou art worthy O Lord and you may be seated let's have the ushers come at this time and we'll receive our morning offering 
as the ushers come, I want to remind you that what you give to the church, you fill out an envelope, and we be sure that you get a receipt, end of the year tax receipt, and you'll be able to claim that, as it were, for your taxes. Let me give you some promises from the Word of God. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap off it so sparingly. If you're a farmer and you just drop a few seed, you just get a very small crop. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, <laughs> what if every man, woman, boy or girl, gave to the work of the Lord? We never, never, never have to worry about paying our bills. Every man according as he purposes his heart, so let him give not grudgingly. If you grudgingly give, do not give, because God's not going to honor that. Or of necessity, well, bills need to be paid. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, can you say this? Always having all sufficiency in all, may abound to every good work. So you give as unto the Lord, and let the Lord bless you as you give. Uh, Gusto, if you pray for this offering, please. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for thy word. Thank you, Lord, for the peace. And I thank you, Lord, for the peace. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for the And Lord, thank you, Lord, for the And Lord, thank you also for this, uh, uh, for the blessings that you have given us, Lord. And we pray that we also bless this uh, offering that we have give, that it will be used for the furtherance of thy word. We ask this in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Pretend like music's playing now. <laughs> All right. I want to encourage you tonight, 6 o'clock, the book of Galatians. We're in chapter 2. And the book of Galatians is a book that speaks about sanctification. That is, that salvation comes through the Lord and not through your works or our works, but comes holy from the Lord. <clears throat>